All right, hey guys, what's up? It's Tim with your facility programming, and I wanna go over the five main times that you as coaches should be looking to scale and tailor your client's training each day, right? So it's steps when I go through it, and as we get really comfortable for this, it becomes part of the process, but especially starting off uh, doing this as a coach or learning a new system of coaching, uh, you're gonna wanna really probably have this down on the sheet, print out the PDF, and make sure that you know what you're looking for because it takes reps and reps just like it takes to get good at any movement. It takes good to make these uh, habits second nature where we are not only having the conversation with someone, but we are actually using that to help coach. Now that brings us to our first one. Our first chance for scaling is actually pre-class when we are doing POGO, right? That is our personal organizational goal and obstacle uh, client interaction where we're helping getting to know them and what the deep rooted things that are bringing them into the gym are, helping make sure they are ready for today's training. So while you might ask them, how are you feeling? And they go, I'm okay. What I'm really looking for, are they like stoked or are they down here? Do they go, yeah, work's been crazy, it's bad. These are all signs they're not ready for high output. Or are they like, man, I've been eating great coach. That tip you gave me the other day is so good. I know this is someone maybe, but I can push a little more. So we're looking for insights in this and actual conversation. I will ask people, hey, we have deadlifts today. How are you feeling about that? Are they timid? Are they that their nature? Are they extra timid for no reason? Do they have an issue you need to address? This is our first chance. Before we're even out there, that is good. And I'll keep saying this throughout this video. The more we can help them enroll themselves in the right choice, the easier it will be. If we wait, 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 and then we just butt heads, you can be right, but you'll be wrong because if they're not uh, taking to it, it's almost like an organ transplant. You have to make sure the body is ready to take in that new organ, just like they need to be ready to take in your coaching advice. That's the first one. The second one's in the warm-up, and the warm-up is predicated on the workout we're doing that day. They're, I've been to gyms where they have the warm-up on the wall and literally framed. <clears throat> That's the warm-up. You do it every day. That is not an ideal way to do it. That is a lower order way to go about this. What we have and what we provide is a warm-up designed every day for the workout from general and to specific pieces that then go into skill instruction. Right, so this part, what I want you to do is as you're explaining the movements, let's say it's deadlift again, and one of the movements is inchworm. We're getting the hamstring and low back uh, ready for the training today. We're talking about this. We're saying, hey, as we're putting our arms out, we're bringing our legs in, make sure you keep your legs straight because when we deadlift, we're going heavy today. Uh, we're gonna make sure we need to stay uh, with good tension on the bar and not have our muscles not ready to lift. So if you have any hamstring tightness, make sure you're seeing me before we go and I'll help make sure and adjust that. Right, we're using the warm up to move the conversation forward. It's not enough to just have them do inchworm. Right, that's anyone can do that. Like we can have an app that does that. But your value is coaching, giving them the reasons why that happens and how to help tailor their training every day to do it. Right, uh, so as we do this, we're helping them go. That'd be number two is in the warm up. We're helping scale them and we're helping get their ideas ready. Uh, for that, they may even come to you, go, yeah, coach, my shoulder, yeah, hey, I, I know it's for strict pressing today, I want you just to do our correctives and deal with that. Or, hey, it hurts off, this we're gonna do single arm dumbbell press versus a barbell, so you can adjust the load. Whatever that ends up being, we're helping them do that there. So that's the idea there. The next part, we've gone through warm-up, now it is time for skill instruction. We're going through what is expected of the movements and their performance for doing this. So again, if it's deadlift, we're doing five sets of five at a 2-0-2-0 tempo. Now that means if you have tight hammies and that lowering is gonna be hard, either we're gonna to wanna to lower the load here so you can do it, or maybe you need to see me, we'll adjust the tempo for you on this so it's appropriate. Or we're gonna do five by three at a lower load. It's gonna be five by 10 with a kettlebell, right? We all already have, you might be better for fitness and function training today, which is gonna be a suitcase deadlift, five by 10 at a 2-0-2-0 tempo. Whatever that is, that's, a, that's scaling right there. That's helping them navigate through the training based on you saying, hey, we're doing five by five and we're building up to a tough set, right? That is the expectation. That is a general initial offering. Then every person is gonna help either find it from fitness, performance, sport, and inside that, okay, well, you need to do this. I want you to stay at 135. I know you can do 155. I'm gonna stay at 135 today, right? And work on our four. That's scaling, right? The next part, 
would be we've gone through skill instruction. Now it is time for the training instruction and acute focus. We're at the whiteboard. Maybe it's for part A or for part B or for the workout. What does that training should look like? It should feel like this. It should do it when we're doing our row. It should feel like, oh, man, it should feel really nasty. Coach, I'm a little sick. Okay, for you, let's keep it aerobic. And we have videos on what it means to keep video things aerobic and sustainable versus lactic endurance and lactic power versus anaerobic high output. CP battery, we have all those in videos for you. So you watch those before so we're ready for those adjustments. That's the idea. We've gone through and now we know, hey, it should look like this. It should feel like this. You have the technique. Is your deadlift good or bad? That's skill instruction, right? Can you do it right? Is your back flat or not? Are you doing it the right load? It's heavy. You know it's going to be submaximally lighter. That's where we want it to go. So it's gonna go uh, with those pieces. They, a lot of times they should be visceral. It should feel like this. It's gonna you know, really strain hard here. You're gonna get to your knee, you're gonna to wanna to quit. Keep pulling there, don't give up. As long as your form's good, you're gonna keep going. That's fine. Or hey, your knees cave in, partner racket. That's just a similar quotes uh, or coaching expectations there we wanna go over. From here, that's number four. The, number, the fifth one is our training setup and show me some reps. Good, here's the bar. Start with some deadlifts. You pass all the other tests, you say you're good, and it's still a cat back. Scared cat. Sorry, cut it, drop it down, right? I don't know how you made it this far, but let's say they did. That's the load, we're stopping them. They're going through the workout. It's Fran. I can do 95 pound thrusters. They did dumbbell thrusters good. They did the wall ball. They did skill instruction good. They did the warm up good on wall squat. Pre class, they said everything was good, so check, 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 check. Now they 95 on the bar, and it's like bad. You say, hey, give me seven in a row. If you can do seven unbroken with good form, you're good. And they get to five, and they're like, Ugh. last chance for scaling, right? The time, and, and that's, that's really it. We give them the expectation. I want you to establish the standard and hold the standard of what you expect, right? Enrolling them in the idea is best. You're always in charge, though. Remember that. You're the coach. You are in charge. You're not, hey, if they agree with you, I'm in 95 screw off, whatever. It is your job, it's your floor, you're in charge. I, I can't emphasize that enough, right? We like to be playful, we like to be fun. We are keeping people safe first and foremost and our rule is do no harm. So if we're letting them do that, they can do harm, now it's on you. They pass all the parts, hey, they're ready to play and that's good. Yeah, can stuff still happen? Sure, people can still get hurt doing whatever. We know our injury uh, rate is incredibly low when they're doing it properly. So that's what we want to look for there on the training setup, kind of doing some training. We're actually doing the training. We're watching them or showing me some reps. Show me some reps. Here's the bar. Do 10 pull-ups. Not so pretty, right? We're going to help tailor the workout for them then. Most people might say there's a sixth one, and they say it's during the wad. And I say this is not a time to scale. This is a fail. Right? If we're scaling during the wad, right, that means we, one of these we missed or we missed a few of them. That's not good. We don't want to be stopping and going, oh, crap, taking the weight off the bar for them during the workout. I've been there. I've done it. It's not great. It breaks the client's confidence in you. It breaks their workout. They don't get the training they're supposed to get. It's You're now involved in doing basically equipment management versus coaching, all these things that bring us out of our role that we don't want. So you want to never have to do that. It happens. It still will happen, but I'm not saying that's scaling. That's just risk management, and that's like liability management. That's not coaching. I've done it times where I'm like, you're good. Hey, rest 30 seconds after this round. You see it, and you're like, oh, crap. Like, it happens. But I'm not going to say that's one of our places we're looking for for scaling. We're looking here to help them do it right. Hey, hit your two-minute split. Hit your two-minute split. Hold on. Hold on to the bar. What those coaching pieces are, what that looks like, right, that's coaching now. Because we set them up, now we can coach. But we, if we don't do that, then we miss it out. And that's the training part. And there's actually one bonus one is kind of similar as pre-class pogo number one. It is post-class wrap up how they do and what does training tomorrow look like, right? We're teasing out tomorrow. Hey, tomorrow we're doing a strict press. We did deadlifts today. We're pressing tomorrow. So if you have any questions about this, come five minutes early. I'll be on the side here. I'll give you some extra tips to succeed tomorrow. Because our goal is to get them to come back one more time. I did that. I teased out tomorrow. Now they're interested in it. Hey, come in. Who's the one with the info? I have the info as the coach. So come see me early. I'm there. I'm prepared to do that first step of scaling, scaling again. So I'm trying to create a never-ending cycle 
of scaling and client interaction. So these are our five steps, our bonus step, and the one to avoid in scaling and tailoring the workouts every day. If you hit these five, you have clients who absolutely love you and make amazing progress. Thanks.